welcome into the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame, intermission, and postgame show this side of the Mississippi, south of the Arctic Circle, north of the equator, and above sea level. I'm Russ Joy. This is Bill Meltzer. Where's Anthony Sanfilippo? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm just kidding. He apparently is out being a thespian. thespian. Has something to do with the, oh. uh, the theater. <laughs> okay. So he will not be here tonight, but that's okay. Bill's here. Bill is very knowledgeable. Arguably, not really, definitely more knowledgeable than Anson and Philly. And the other guy that you're looking for, Bundy, he's over doing a little bit of the pregame radio, you know, the number two rated pregame intermission. Okay. And then he's got to come over here, and we're going to have a lot of fun pregame intermissions and postgame. Bill, a lot to look forward to. I want to, before we get into tonight's game, as the Flyers look for revenge from 2010, um, this clearly has the same stakes as the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> I want to get your opinion on a few of the things that have happened over the last few days. I'm sure that everybody who's watching now on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter are well aware of what's been happening around the team. But uh, surprisingly, some would say, seemingly out of nowhere, amidst conversations of Alexei Kolosov, is he going to get the visa paperwork yeah. in and in time? Bingo, bango, bongo, we find out one morning. Moscow, CSKA Moscow, terminates the contract of Ivan Fedotov, <laughs> and that there's a chance he's going to play for the Flyers, there's a chance they're going to work it out, and then within like 48 hours, he's in Voorhees, yeah. sitting next to Danny Briere, who is, well, <laughs> certainly not the same size as a guy whose hips, I've never seen it before, where a goalie stands, and Bump. around <laughs> at his hips is the crossbar, yeah. we're going to get into that, yeah. but Ivan Fedotov is here he is not playing tonight. He's not starting. Right. Maybe he'll get in the game. Who knows? But he's not playing tonight. But I wanted to get your opinion, your thoughts. Uh, it certainly seemed like something that uh, two years ago when he went off to serve military time and then a year ago when he re-upped with Moscow, it felt like this day was never going to come. He was never going to make it over. Yeah. Are, are you surprised that, that this played out the way that it didn't? And by the way, so quickly out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I think like everybody else, I, I had given up any belief that it was going to happen. Um, you know, the when he ended up staying with Siska this year, right, the old Red Army team, uh, on a two-year contract, a new contract, and the uh, the Flyers took it up with the Double IHF, and the Double IHF ruled in the Flyers' favor, but he, you know, gigs you the cage, so cage us that we don't care. Is it yet? Yeah, it's in the end. He's, he's not coming. It's in the end for me. So, <laughs> and then you know, re I mean, obviously, some wheels were turning behind the scenes. Yeah. Where it, it got to a point where, okay, once Siska's season was over, they, they finally let him go. Yeah. He, they kept it, you know, kept it all very quiet. Not None of us had an inkling anything was going on. Then all of a sudden he shows up, he, he's in Voorhees. Yeah, it, 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 it went from hopeful to, well, he's already here. So, yeah. yeah. It was insane. And it's funny because a few nights ago, we did a, an emergency podcast, myself and Ant, uh, and, and Bundy joined us. He had been doing NHL Network Radio, and then he hopped on, and we're all kind of like, all right, we're talking in hypotheticals. We had heard from a few people who were like, hey, it's not done yet. You know, there's a lot of geopolitical machinations that were in motion, yeah. and they're like, you know, well, let's be a little bit careful. And then... Like I said, it was 36 hours later or whatever. We we see the guy in Voorhees, and you know Tortorello was asked about it uh, this morning, and said that he does not know. He has not scouted Fedotov. He doesn't really know anything about him, and that he doesn't really know anything about goalie about goaltending. He doesn't he doesn't want to get into the finer points of goaltending, and that's why they have Kim Dillabaugh as the the goalie coach. But he he was asked, you know, is Fedotov gonna get in the lineup anytime soon? Towards kind of played the, well, I don't know, because we have to see. But when, what do you realistically think is possible? Are we looking at Monday's game? Are we looking at a home game against the Islanders? Are we looking at a road game uh, against a Columbus? Like, I where where do you think they're going to more likely push I think when they have the, the Columbus and Buffalo games, that back-to-back. -back, Friday, Saturday. I, I, think, I think you'll see it in one of those. Yeah. Um, I don't know about after that. If the Flyers have already clinched, then I, I would – you might give them the last game, you know. Um, it depends on how desperate you are in a way. Yeah. But uh, I think he'll definitely get one of the B2B games. Um, give, him, give him a few days to settle in, get some reps in. Um, Jason Bertizis has pointed out he has brand new equipment. That takes, it takes about a week to break in or yeah. you know, in some cases. So, um, 
You know, he's temporary living quarters. Um, he's actually uh, staying with Guryanov. That's nice. So, all right. It's, it's, always, it's always nice to have a guy who speaks your language, yeah. there to drive you to practice, already knows his way around, that kind of thing. Um, you know, you know when, when Fedotov was 19 years old, he was actually here for development camp. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, has been back here since then. So now. It's crazy. Um, you know, I mean, his dream was always to play in the NHL, I guess, like, like most players. Um, you know, and he was, and it's often the case with really big goalies. They're a little slow to develop. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was in the KHL right away either. He wasn't even a regular in the KHL until he was 23, 24 years old. Yeah. And then he, then he hit that next level and he took off over there. Um, you know, it, it's funny because Fedotov and, and Kolosov are kind of a study of contrast in Golden. Um, you know. Fedotov obviously is huge. He's more of a, a puck blocking goalie, get yeah. his body in the way, let it hit him. There's a lot of body to, lot of body <laughs> to, to use hit, to right? block. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Fedotov is, or rather Kolosov is very athletic, kind of acrobatic. Is it like a Ninamaki sort of? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm in, I'm in really a UC Saros kind of a goalie. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes could be a little over aggressive at times, yeah. um, but um, you know, very, very athletic. So you, you'll never give up on a save. Um, you know, Fedotov, the book on him is always to get him moving, maybe open up his legs. You know, there's, there's holes with the bigger goalie. So it took him a lot of time to learn how to get square to the shooters, have an economy of movement, that kind of thing. He's not great on, on breakaways necessarily. But he's, he's very good at, at, at cutting down the angles and you know make, making stops in that way. Yeah. Um, it's no longer really an issue of the the bigger rinks because they have most KHL rinks are NHL size or they're Finnish size, which is kind of kind of halfway Close, between. Yeah. yeah. So there's only there's only one team that still plays in the the big Olympic ice that helps. So. So it's less of a learning curve as, as it used to De be. Definitely less learning curve. Plays still develop a little differently over there than develop over here. It's still more of a passing game over there. Um, you know, so... More traffic over here? Way more traffic. Way so more there's, traffic. There's way more a, not as many clean looks yeah. uh, from, a, from a goalie's perspective. Yeah, a lot not, more in the way. Yeah, and, so you, you know, and he can look over the traffic yeah, in, in his sight, which, is, which actually... It's kind of helpful, thing. one would think. No, not for sure. You know... In terms of a goalie coming straight over from Europe to, to play in the NHL, um, some guys it's worked for, right? Um, Sergei Bobrovsky went yeah. right from the KHL to the NHL. Um, Roman Chikmatic was a, a Vezina finalist. A eight, he was a 29-year-old rookie, right? Yeah. Um, right from the Czech League to the NHL. Uh, but, but some guys it hasn't worked with. They, when the 2012-2013 the lockout year, um, or 2012-2013, yeah, they, they, they brought a goalie over from, from Finland, Nico Hovinen, who had been a second-round pick from Minnesota. Uh, they were hoping he might compete for a job, and he totally flopped. He ended up in the ECHL. So some guys it works with, some guys it doesn't. We'll, we'll see. So. How, how tall was Stoli? Stoli's like 6'2", 6 6'3"? Six, uh, no, so Stoli's bigger than that. Stoli's 6'5", 6'6". Okay. Yeah. Because uh, I remember, I'm yeah. going to date myself here yeah. for a second. You ready for this? I remember back on the Flyers message boards, yeah. there was... Not that long. It was, it was a pretty long time ago, but wasn't that long ago. Back, back in the day, intern Andrew, are you young enough to or old enough to remember the message board days? All right, so we're all right. Yeah. And I remember seeing this rumor about this guy Stoli the goalie, as they were calling him, and about how he was this massive guy. And the joke was always like, man, there's not going to be any space left. You know, like everybody thinks about it. Like when you're a little kid, right? Was it? It was Russell, right? Was Keenan Thompson's character in in D3 Mighty Ducks, right? How don't you know? You're supposed to be okay. Look that up. But he was like, that was when Keenan Thompson was right. like the chunky kid, right? And yeah, the joke yeah, was yeah. always like, you put the chunky kid in net, he fills up the net. And in the case of Stoli, it was like, hey, he's just such a big dude. When you look at Fedotov, it was, it was a little bit shocking, I think. Yeah. When he's 6'8", and like legitimately, and I showed this the other day during the press conference, but when, when he stands in front of the goal on his skates, it wasn't a perspective thing. It's not like he was six feet in front of the goal, and it just made him look so much more massive. The NHL even put the image out and said, this has not been corrected or anything legitimately the crossbar is at his hips yes. the problem that i would assume is something he's had to work through with such a big guy how the hell do you get down and how do you get down quickly yeah and, and i mean he's he's pretty athletic for such a big guy they the book on him is always get him moving legs open up it's hard to close the five hole when you're that big yeah and um or you put the puck right at his feet 
because a lot of times big goalies have problems with pucks right at their feet. Um, that's always been the book on him. He's improved significantly. Um, also improved his, his puck handling a lot. Yeah. Um, in four straight years, he's had at least one assist. So he's not a bad puck handling goalie either. Uh, that, that certainly helps. It's been a while since the Flyers have had a good puck handling goalie. Um, so, you know, that could be an asset for him too. Uh, I, I would think you keep it try, you know, try to keep it pretty simple at first. But, you know, let's make no mistake. There, there will be adjustments. He hasn't had a training camp. He hasn't had a real practice yeah. even. And I don't, know, I don't know if he'll get them because... You know, this time of year, teams prioritize rest over practice. So, yeah. um, you know, the league won't have any book on him, but he won't have any book any shooters either. Yeah. Uh, hey, we're not going to take a break here to do an ad read, but we are going to take a moment to do is look out into that camera. We're going to thank all of you for being here. Thank you. If you're on YouTube right now, hit that little like button. It's great. We love when you hit the like button. It's very helpful. It helps more people find us. Like the video, share the video to Flyers fans in your life, and subscribe to the channel. We're very close to 3,000 subscribers, which isn't bad. We started the, the channel, I believe, last summer, so we're less than a year in. We've got 3,000-ish subscribers. We'd love to get to 3,000. Maybe even tonight. Who's to know? Who's to say? Hit the subscribe button. There was a guy who jumped on the stream uh, the last Press Row show and said, I made an account just to interact with Snow awesome. the Goalie. Awesome. And the Press Row show, the number one rated pregame intermission postgame show. Uh, if you're on Twitter, we love you and appreciate you. Same if you're on Facebook. But head over to YouTube. We're going to probably get some interactive polls going up here at some point as well. And don't forget, second intermission, we got intern Andrews back. He survived the 216-degree fever. I'm glad that he's alive. We can confirm that unless he's a hologram, he definitely exists. So intern Andrew Trivia will be back in its full form tonight. No Anthony Sanfilippo. That's okay. Bundy and I will still be able to get it right. And with your help, we'll have a very successful press row show tonight. It's already off to a great start with Bill. This Bill's fantastic. I do want to ask you, Bill. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's kind of let's kind of rank this out a little bit. So Redacted started the year as the starter, and Sam Harrison was the backup. Yeah. Then Redacted went bye bye. Sam Harrison became the number one. Didn't come into the season expecting to be number one. Maybe they rode him a little bit. I don't know if you say that they rode him too much, because you have to be ready at all times. Yeah. But certainly. They wanted to be able to rely on a backup at some point. Cal Peterson didn't get it done. Felix Sandstrom was okay sometimes, and then the wheels really fell off. Yeah. Given the fact that Torts said, hey, I don't know what Fedotov is. I have no idea. Going to defer to Kim Dillabaugh. One has to think that there was a conversation about, all right, we want to get a look at this guy. His contract is technically up at the end of the year, though it seems like both sides are very open to exploring a, an extension. If you had to rank it right now, in terms of what's the most realistic ability for goalies that are currently stateside or soon to be stateside. Where would you rank Ersin, Fedotov, or Fedotov, we're gonna get used to that, Kolosov, and uh, let's throw in Sandstrom as well. Like where do you think going into a playoff run, like where where would you rank these guys? Well, uh, Ersin is your number one. Yep. And, and I think he's gonna still continue to see the vast majority of the playing time. Um, you might only need the backup for one game. Um, you know, I mean, you, you have the possibility of seeing him tonight. The, the, the two ways that are happening are an injury or you're down three to nothing or something. Yeah. So Flyers don't want to see him tonight. Um, but, I mean, Fedotov has Olympic experience. He won a championship, you know, over in the KHL. So, to me, right now, he's number two. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's there's much faith either in Peterson or in Sandstrom. Kolosov is an interesting case because he's uh, you know, he's been he's been a starter in the KHL since he was 19, and this year he actually beat out a guy who played a little bit in the NHL a year ago um, for Ottawa. So he had to compete for the job and he won it. He, he again, he's a very good goalie. I, I think that um, because he's so aggressive in the net, I think a little bit of time in the American League. Um, so you, you might go a quarter to half of a season and have a better sense of what you have. Yeah. So right now, to me, you know, he'd be a definite step down. I don't, I really don't think they want to go to Peterson or Sancho again. I'll say absolutely half. Yeah. All right, I want to play a game. All right, let's do it. We're going to do a thought experiment. Sometimes teams, as the playoffs approach, they look for every advantage they can get. No one has the book on Fedota. Right. I mean, like, you can... You can try to ascertain like what exactly 
he is and where his weak points are by watching KHL and some, some other international film on him. But if he ends up getting, say, two starts down the stretch and he looks really good, is there a chance that going into the playoffs, Tortorella could look to get him in the mix in the playoffs with the idea that there is less film on him and it might throw off a team when you're going in as probably a very heavy underdog in the first round. But they'd say, all right, he, he's, a, he's acquitted himself well. He's, he's certainly a big dude. We're trying to figure it out. He, he's played well. Is there a chance that they look to gain the competitive advantage by starting a guy who not a lot of teams will have seen? Not impossible, but unlikely. And what we know from John Tortorella, when, you know, when he has a guy that he likes, and he most certainly likes Samuel Erson, He's pretty loyal to his guys, right? So uh, I, I think he'll, he'll go to Urson, um, you know, unless you're in a situation where you're down 3-0 in a series, you have nothing, to, that kind of thing. But I think we go into the playoffs with Urson. But, you know, maybe funny, thing, funny things happen sometimes. So. I'm not trying to start a goalie controversy. Yeah. Just, just in case, all right? We're not on the radio talking about quarterbacks and yeah, yeah, yeah. having Jeff Garcia come in over Donovan McNabb, okay? Although... One could have made the argument a couple of times, Jeff Garcia. Ah, we're not going there. We're not going there with Ivan Fedotov tonight. We're not. Intern Andrew's a big Ivan Fedotov fan. I heard that all he wants is to get a handshake from Ivan Fedotov to prove that the guy's hand, his hand will probably go halfway up your forearm. You're not a huge guy. How big are your hands? You know what they say about big hands? Big gloves. Big yeah, gloves. Yeah. 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 Huh. All right, uh, Bill, let's talk about tonight's game. Chicago, not a great team, although Montreal also not a great team. Montreal stuck it to the Flyers in a very hotly contested playoff race where you need to get as many points as possible. You have home ice advantage tonight. How do you see this one playing out? Well, first of all, Chicago has been not awful at home. Flyers beat them in their building. Didn't play great, yeah. but, but enough to win. Chicago's just been brutal on the road. I mean, brutal on the road. Um, if you take what happened last game against Montreal, right, break it down. The Flyers got the great start early that early in that first period. Almost scored in the first shift. Get an early power play, which went nowhere, and torpedo the momentum. Next thing you know, you're down two to nothing. They didn't have much momentum to the latter part of the second period. Then they made that big push in the third. Don't put yourselves in a position where you're chasing the game. Um, I, I am a little worried about the penalty kill right now because as good as it's been all year, it has not been very good the last 10 games now. And that 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 has they have to put it in. And actually, one thing that is going pretty well right now for Chicago is the power play. Don't give them free chance. Don't give be them, nice. <laughs> don't give them any gifts. Well, it, yeah. I mean, it's funny because the Flyers actually have a couple of recent power play goals. But the ones that have, the ones that have been bad have been really bad, right? So, I guess that's always the the part of this that that, you know, you look at what what's smoke and mirrors, what's fool's gold, what is real. The 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 PK has been largely effective and consistent all year. And that that is the thing where even though they're not a massively skilled offensive team, they're able to play responsibly and they yeah. play well. And now you're getting Nick Sealer back in the lineup tonight, which we'll talk about here in a second, but. The PK being as elite, you could even say, as it's been all year, eventually there is that kind of like come back down to earth or there, you're going to hit a little regression. Everybody. The fact that the power play can't seem to in, get the inverted, you know, the, the proportionality is kind of a shame. You almost need that PK to be perfect to make up for just how bad the power play is in terms of, like, trying to win the special teams battle in these games. The, the power play has been nuts. Uh, over the month of March, you know, when, when you get to this time of year, it really is all about what you're doing lately. Yeah. Um, early in March, the top unit had, was clicking for a little bit, right? The, the double net front look and, you know, uh, moving Frost to the bumper and... You know, they, they, were, they were getting some goals in the top unit, whereas the PP2 was a mess. Yeah. Anytime PP2 was in the ice, it was just, you know, you knew nothing was happening. And lately, it's been a little bit the other way around, because PP1 can't get entries right now. And PP2, where they, they, they have power play goals, I think, in three of the last four games, it's been the second unit that's been doing it. Yeah. But, you know, so you look over the real small sample size, it's 20% over a small sample, which isn't bad. But again, you look at the Montreal game, the power play killed them. It, it, it torpedoed any momentum they had. Ideally, if you're not scoring on the power play, 
you don't at least you at least don't want to hurt your momentum. You want to at least create a couple chances, carry it over into five on five. That, that's not too much to ask. It's not even too much to ask given the players you have to not be the worst in the league. Uh, you know, I I think the Flyers, even though you're a bottom third team, they shouldn't be the worst. Um, but I've been saying that all year, and they haven't been able to string it together. That's the thing that I guess is a little bit perplexing, too. They're 22nd in the league in goals scored this year. So, like, no, they're not a skilled team. We all get that. But they're also, if they were, like, 29th in the league in, in total goals, then you'd say, all right, like, they really just do legitimately suck in the offensive zone, right? But, like, 22nd isn't horrific. It's certainly not what you would expect of a team that's on the cusp of a playoff spot. But, like, if you're able to score the 22nd most, you know, across all situations, you would think that, like, the, the power play should at least be able to be, like, 24th, 25th in the league. And that's still, by the way, piss poor. That's still, but that's still the bottom third. It's yeah. still not yeah. as putrid as no. this has been. If you look at how they score, when they're actually scoring five on five, they do a lot of it in transition, off the rush, right? Um, honestly, they've, and they've done a nice job kind of adjusting around it, because when they first traded Sean Walker, was one of their best breakout passers, one of the best guys at starting the rush. It really hurt them. Yeah. And they're still kind of figuring some ways to work around that. But that's how they score a lot of their goals. Um, you know, uh, a stretch pass, uh, a turnover in the defensive zone becomes offense. Um, they don't score a lot of those gritty kind of goals around there. The deflections, the scramble around the net, somebody, you know, somebody puts it in. Um, if you look at the power play, to me, they have some distributors. Brink can distribute, Frost can distribute, York can distribute. Um, Farabee's not a bad distributor. But they don't really have, they don't have any kind of consistent threat on the flank. Yep. They don't have a consistent threat in the bumper, and they don't have a net front presence. You don't have that, you're not going to score. Pretty, pretty important parts yeah, of exactly, yeah. exactly. It's just, I, like, I, I don't know, I, I feel like every year, there have been those conversations and obviously it's like more of an online discourse thing with fans than anything but like Loppy was in charge of the power play at one point right like people slaughtered him mercilessly online about how bad the power play was and people like go after Rocky Thompson for it you know on social media but like a lot of fans seem to be upset that like more media people aren't you know cornering John Tortorella and saying yo why does the power play suck so bad why haven't you switched the coach yet and I think we all kind of know a good reason why that hasn't come up. Yeah. yeah. You know exactly what he's going to say. Oh, well, of course. Of, co well, of course. <laughs> uh, you know. Or maybe he won't. Maybe he wouldn't show up for that. No. I don't know. Well, yeah, no. He's, they he's, go 0 for 5 in tonight's game. Good chance he doesn't. No, but, like, you know. No. He, I don't want to put you in a bad spot. The last time you were on the show, you uh, <laughs> asked a question. You said, oh, it's, it's a statement. I only answer questions. Yeah. Or that was two shows ago or something. Yeah, but, you know. Even, even, though there, even though I did, even though there was an actual question at the end of it. But anyway. Yeah, I, I heard it. Yeah. I heard it. yeah. Hey, I, I, if it makes yeah. you feel any better, Brad Shaw did come on the show yeah. during the Flyers Carnival, and last I checked, he's yeah, he's no, still employed. No, yeah. So no, 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 for sure. But I don't think towards. I don't know. He, maybe, maybe since Ant's not here, you won't get like the snow the goalie stink in maybe, the media room. Maybe. So I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. But uh, no, but he won't throw one of his coaches under the bus ever. But yeah. That's that's fine. You should. Which is good. You to should. some extent, it's good. Should. Yeah, like yeah, you know. You should. Um, I, I, you know, the Flyers have been through a parade of power, power play coaches since since Joey Mullen. You know, uh, Chris Knobloch did it for a while. Uh, Michelle Tarian did it. Uh, she's, uh, John Torchetti was doing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, it's not just it's not just Rocky. This predates Rocky. Um, the the worst power play percentage in team history was right before Rocky got here. So you know, if you want to if you want to argue that uh, you know. Rocky isn't the answer. You know, you can make an argument, right? But, but if you want to pit it all on Rocky, well, again, it goes back before Rocky. And, and uh, you know, they, they were 12.6%. And, and Drew was still here at that time. That was yeah. the last year Drew was here. So it's not even just a question of one or two guys on a power play. They, they just, they don't have, they don't have enough weapons. It's as simple as that. All right, so let me throw a hypothetical at you really quick. This is the last hypothetical I think I want to throw at you, but who knows? Who's to okay. say? How often does a does a team look at special teams and say like we are going to work to identify a potential assistant coach who really is an innovative mind at the power play 
and really target that kind of person. Because I don't think you see it all that much. But, like, there has to be somebody in the league. There has to be an assistant. So There has to be somebody who can try. I know you're kind of shining a turd. I get it. It's not. You don't have, like, a bunch of, like, tarnished, beautiful silverware and, like, antique china that you can, you know, bring out for the playoffs. However, like, the results are bad. Oh, no, no, for, no, for sure. But, I, you know, Chris Dombach was supposed to be that power play wonderkin guy, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it helped that in Erie he had a certain guy named Connor McDavid. That, that certainly helped their power play there a little bit. The guy might have a future but, in the uh, league, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah, he, he might. He, he might stick, you know. Yeah, go on the limb and predict that maybe he'll make it in this league. But, you know, but he was supposed to be the, you know, the, the biggest and brightest young guy to bring in. That, that's why they let Joey Mullen go. You know, and Nabla came in. He did all right, but not not as well as Mullen did. And it just it's kind of gone downhill progressively. I, 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 as you said, you know, it's polishing a turd to some degree. I, you know, but the Flyers lineup is not devoid of talent. Yeah. I, if you look at the roster, more than half the guys were, were first round picks originally. So it's not totally devo- devoid of talent. Should they all have been first round picks? <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we can go player by player, but I'm saying they're not devoid of talent. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I, I, I think until you get a real net front guy and, and a guy who can score from the flank with cons- with some consistency, uh, I, I hope Forster becomes that. Guy. I was gonna say, who do you yeah. who do you think could develop into that yeah. guy if they had to go with somebody in house? So yeah. Forster. Forster, Forster, I think has the best shot of being that guy. Um, you know. As a goal scorer, I like Tippett taking the puck to the net. He'll yeah. score from distance sometimes, but I, I don't think he's going to consistently score from distance. I, I think Forster could become that guy, but he's not hes not there yet. Yeah. So. Is there anybody in the pipeline within the organization who projects to be somebody that could help on the power play? Is there anybody down in Lehigh Valley uh, that, that you look at and you say, ah, with the right with the right seasoning, Maybe, maybe Samu Tomal, maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, the guy you're waiting on is Michkov. Um, Michkov is a guy who can score from anywhere. A variety, yeah, anywhere. He can score a whole variety of different ways. That's a game changer yeah. when you get Michkov over here. And um, you know, he can score from the circles on one timers, um, wrist shots, one on one with the goalie. You know, the, the, the occasional Michigan goal, Torch might have to live with that. Um, you know, is I, that a hockey play? That's a, I mean, he said about Zegras uh, yeah. uh, two years ago, I think it was, right, on, yeah, on ESPN. Was, yeah, it was when he flipped over the net that, yeah. that Milano banged in. Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> he, he might have to live with those because Michkov loves them. So he, they, might have to come to a, they might have to come to an agreement on that. What is a realistic expectation from, from what you've watched of Mepe Mishkov abroad? What is a reasonable ceiling to put on him, it, it, or even a reasonable floor? Because I think, like, you know, there there seems to be, like, a pretty wide variance. You know, like, it, you hear a few people who try to put out that, like, hey, he might not be the most coachable guy. That was the thing that came out at one point. That seemed to get dispelled. His coach and a bunch of veteran players that he played with in the past said not true. What, what do you think a realistic expectation for him is when he does come over? Because he'll still be young yeah. when he comes over, very young. Yeah, and, and he'll need some adjustments, particularly off the puck. But but as he develops, I mean, he, you know, you look at guys like, you know, I, I don't want to bring up names like Kucherov and, and guys like that. That name's been thrown but, around a lot, but though. He, but, but he plays a lot like him, and, and he scores, you know, scoring as a teenage player in the KHL at kind of that same rate. And yes, the KHL was a, you know, was a little better league then than it is now. I don't think it matters. Uh, I, I, I think that I think he's going to come here and um, a set up a lot of goals because he's a really good playmaking forward and be score a ton of goals. Um, you know, I'll say being a, a 35 goal, 75, 80 point guy is a realistic expectation, and there's there's. Of ceiling over that, but uh, but I think in terms of what you could realistically expect from them within a, a year or two of being in the league, I, I think that's it. pretty wild. Yeah. Within a year or two, if he gets yeah. to be that 35, maybe knocking on the goal of 40 kind of goal scorer, it's something this team just hasn't no. hasn't. Ha- when when is the last time the Flyers had a guy that you'd consider either a sniper or a legitimate 40 goal threat? Jeff Carter, like is that? Jeff Carter, Simone Gagne had back-to-back 40 goals here. You know. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, but they, they almost down at like like anomalies, right? Because right. we're so used to even like the most skilled guys on the team, like for a long time, uh, Giroud, Jake Voracek, they weren't goal first guys, they, they were, were creators. Guys, yeah. So it, there's something about that that's so tantalizing. I oh, think sure. probably part of why people were so upset to see Quitter Gautier go off and like throw a, a tantrum, allegedly. Although we've been told he's a great guy. That's what his coach that's, says. That's, 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 yeah. He was just mis misunderstood and mistreated or something. But. Uh, you know, one guy who never had trouble scoring goals in the NHL because he didn't really try all that much is about to join us. And that, of course, Bundy is here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. A secured Dr. Meltzer for you. <laughs> and you know what? It's been great to have him here, and it's great to have you here. How was the number two rated pregame intermission show? It's good. Yeah, it was good? Good. How's it feel to be back on the uh, number great. one rated pregame intermission postgame show? Well, I love Jason and Brian, too. And I great know guys. They want, they want us to get our messaging out, too, to the to public when they're driving into the games. Um, but I got a few minutes here with you guys. Uh, did we do our picks yet? We did not yet. No. All right, you're up. Hi, everybody. Great to see you tonight. So I actually <laughs> do have the prediction from uh, Anthony Sanfilippo, who uh, is at the theater being a thespian, we said earlier, Bundy. He is out there doing his acting or something. Uh, he said 5-3 Flyers, which is a little bit surprising to me. Intern Andrew, turn on that mic. What do you have? I'm going to take the Flyers 4-1. to 4-1? to one? Yes. Wow. I'm declaring this a must-win game as well. Wow. A must-win out of Intern Andrew. OK. Billy? Bill? I have 5-2 Flyers. 5-2 Flyers? I'm, I'm going. Oh, I'll, I'll go before, do you want me to go before you so you don't say that I'm a, a fraud right, go, who just go, Well, no, that's what you do. You've been stealing our picks all year. That's not true. That's why you're even in this thing. That's not true. Ahead. Fake news. It's all good. Very fake. Um, Chicago's going to have a better. Chicago's going to have a better game than a lot of people expect, and we're going to all wonder why Ivan Fedotov wasn't in net because tonight the Flyers are going to win three to two. Three two. It's going to be a low scoring game. Yeah, I um, I look for a way for to see how a team if they can beat the Flyers. There's no way, shape, or form that I can find any way Chicago beats the Flyers in the most meaningful game, once again, that this team has played in four years. I do not see a, a destruction like they did to Pittsburgh last year. 5-1 Flyers. 5-1. Okay. It ain't even close. Like, I think this is a... This is a beatdown. Like I, it has to be a beatdown. This can't. I don't even. If you're telling me it's three-two, and it's tight in the third, then something bad's already happened. Well, I look at what happened against San Jose, and and I look at what just happened against Montreal. And it's like they should be pulling away from these teams. They should be getting up early and and putting their foot on the proverbial throat. And they just haven't been doing it of late. So I, I don't know. We just got five dollars because Bill Melcher's here. Ah. Yeah, Tony yeah. Louie. I've been following Melt since before Facebook and his hockey buzz days. Congratulations on how far you've come. You've earned it, and it's great to see. We already knew all that. Like Bill's the best. Bill's a great friend for 20 years. Amazing writer. Great with the alumni. He's truly part of the Flyers and the Flyer family, extended family. So, and he does a great job and knows his hockey. Thanks for being here, Bill. Always a pleasure. You pay me later, all right? Oh, there you go. You got it. <laughs> Bill, what was, your, what was your score again? I had 5-2. Five, 5-1 two. Five, two. Five, for me. Ant was 5-3. I was 3-2. What was yours again? 4-1. Four, 4-1 one. Four, one for intern Andrew. All right. Uh, what we were talking about a little bit ago, Bundy, is about Fedotov. Which yep. He does want to be known as Ivan. He did say Ivan, not Ivan. And he wants Fedotov, not Fedotov. So we're going Fedotov. Remember in uh, Rocky IV, uh, Brigitte Nielsen called him Ivan. Get up, Ivan. And then everyone else called him Ivan Drago. Ivan. So you know what? We'll let you know what we're going to call him when we decide on it ourselves. Well, I'm going to call. Listen, the man is six foot eight. All right, you thought it looked preposterous with him next to Danny Briere. It's going to look worse with me. He had Jason. I'll call him whatever he wants to be called. Him the other day. What's that? He had Danny and Jason on each side of him the other day. Do you see the, the new Wonka? You see the new, I was gonna say lunch. I was gonna say you see the new Wonka movie. <laughs> is that why Jason's beard is green? I I, I mean, maybe didn't come out from St. Patrick's Day. Uh, okay. All right, we'll be back. First intermission, second intermission, and post game here on the Press Row Show. If you haven't done so already, like the video, share the video, subscribe on YouTube, Snow the Goalie. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, again, we love you, appreciate you. Hit the like button there. Share it to your friends on Facebook. If you're on Twitter, we love you, appreciate you. Hit it with a retweet or a quote tweet. Tell everybody about the Press Row Show. And we'll be back for intermissions and post game 
Thanks again, and we'll talk to all of you after the first period. Right.
goalie controversy on our hands. 2 nothing after 1. Obviously, this is going to be the coming out party for Ivan Fedotov. I'm just kidding. Welcome into the Press Row Show, first intermission show. I'm Russ. That's Bundy. Anthony is on assignment at the Swarthmore Theater, the Swarthmore uh, Players Club, I believe it is, being a thespian, a man of the theatre. How are you? Well, after that period, not good. I mean, that was awful. Yeah. That's maybe the worst period I've seen them play in at least since the first half of the year. Um, every single thing that you're not supposed to do against that team, the Flyers just did it. Um, cute plays, stupid plays, um, Chicago with great rush chance. I mean, you could you could say it could be 4 nothing right now. Um, but they have a chance to wake up and a 2 nothing lead against this team or, or being down 2 is not the end of the world. But uh, the process in that first period was horrendous. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get into this period, but before we do, we have a, uh, a listener who traveled from abroad to be here, and he's got a very interesting story about how he ended up here and, and why he picked tonight, of all nights, to be here. Introduce yourself to your fellow listeners out there. Yeah, I'm Wayne Mathers uh, from Beaver Meadow, Ontario, just outside of uh, Sarnia. Beaver Meadow. Beaver Meadow. Beaver Meadow. Up in Ontario. Sarnia, Ontario. For the, for the uh, Well, Darian Hatcher's team. Is it the Sarnia Stings? He's yeah, Darian his... Hatcher. and Yeah, I was Travis Konechny. Yeah, there. that's right. Now, I didn't bring you on because of that absolutely beautiful <laughs> mustache over your upper <laughs> lip. It's not that. There's another reason. You came down. And it wasn't to see the Flyers, obviously. It was to come see us, right? Yeah, that's right? exactly what it was. Yeah, I wanted to come down. I, this was going to be the uh, barbecue that you guys are going to have outside, and Bundy said he was going to flip some burger. So I convinced my wife, because she's a, uh, a uh, Connor Bedard fan. I'm sorry about that. That's but my right. daughter and I are diehard Flyer fans, and uh, we wanted to come down here. I wanted to uh, – my, my goal was to meet you guys, and because uh, I was here in 2019 to see the, see the Flyers beat the Leafs, which was great for all my uh, counterparts back oh, in yeah. Ontario. Um, but yeah, that's why I come down here, and uh, my wife uh, took sick, and she couldn't come, so my daughter and I uh, come down here. You know what? It's better that way, too. It was great. No yep. offense to your wife. I'm sure a great no, lady. No, got to see but, Joe Watson here. But yeah. that's that's one fewer Blackhawks fan in attendance and one more Flyers fan in attendance, which is great. 200%. Love that you drove down, though, brother. Yeah, um, she was Of course, I'm an Ottawa guy, so I understand the long ride. Yeah. How, how long was the drive down? Uh, in total, it's about uh, nine and a half hours. We went into Allentown last night, stayed there, and uh, but uh, there's nothing to see in the state of New York, I'll tell you that. Nope. Now, can you confirm or deny that up in Ontario, the Press Row Show is the number one rated pregame intermission and postgame show? It is 100%. You know what I mean? It outdoes the, anything that the Leafs can do or Ottawa Senators. You guys are the best. Thanks very much, brother. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And Thank you good. know what? Making the trip down like this, love having you on. Right and on. Uh, safe travels back. we got to get a win here because we want to call you lucky. And exactly. we're going to do our best at the end of the night. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank it's you, great, brother. It's great meeting you. Great meeting you. Thanks so much. And we, ble you know, of all the nights for Ant to miss, he misses tonight. He and does. When Wayne makes that drive down from Ontario, and you know what? And intern Andrew, we got to get rid of that interim, you know, handle for him because he is the best. I actually shook his hand. Hey, you got the handshake yeah. from Wayne? <laughs> Wait with the handshake. We're, that's we're working stuff. on the intern. That's, we're that's working. good stuff right there. Now we have an advocate to remove the intern handle. We didn't know he was going to do that. Now listen, I love having Wayne on, but coming on and then on the way out trying to get us to drop the intern tag. I don't know. I don't know. Now we like we like Wayne. Wayne's great. Wayne's daughter, Thanks. fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So, uh, and you know what? He didn't show it, but he came down here with some merch from the shop.snowthegoalie.com site where he got the orange and the black, the white shirt with the orange and the black. Great look. I'm going to tell you right now. Look into my eyes. What do you see? Cha-ching, cha-ching. We got something coming that you're going to want to get. Working on a new design, and it may or may not have to do with a, uh, a recent player who came stateside. I told you about the design a little bit ago. Don't say anything about it because yep. I don't I don't need any uh, any of the hawks that listen to the show to uh, swoop in and try to get their design out first. But it's going to be a really good one, and I promise you, it's something that you're going to absolutely want to have. Um, I know that I was being facetious earlier about changing a goalie goalie controversy. Very unlikely. What would it take to see Fedotov tonight? I mean, they... two more quick goals by the Blackhawks. You won't do it before four. I'm telling you. There's do you, no, do you there's think no that that's way. It? Like, but just I, I mean, I, I don't even I, listen. I don't even want to come out and say that that it's an automatic. I mean, he could give up six yeah. or seven here tonight, and we may not see a change. 
It, you know, unless it's just a wheels off night, but I don't, I don't see that. Flyers need to wake up because that period was pathetic. It really was. It was not a good period. They didn't have, they didn't, where they weren't skating. They were too many hope for chances in Chicago. Like we said, they're just going to come play. They're going to play hockey. They're going to try to add to their stats, the guys that are there to try to get a contract next year. Um, they're playing. Was, they're first, playing fine. First goal was bad. Wrap around that. I think he initially got the pad too, and then the second effort went in. That wasn't a great goal to give up. What did you see on the second goal? Three on two chance. Quick pass across. Uh, right handed shot far side. I mean, that was a hell of a shot. Again, why are the Flyers giving up a three on two like that? Yeah. I mean, it was an open ice three on two. I mean, those are nowadays. You know, guys are going to at least get a heck of a chance out of a good clear three on two. I mean, there, there's so many things they need to do better. Yeah. Um, but getting down early and then, you know, Chicago getting out of it could be three nothing. Easily three nothing. They missed a, a play at the end where the, the Chicago player skated away from the net rather than if he just went to the net, it was a tap in with about under a minute to go. So. Flyers really need to need to wake up here and wake up quick. There was one that hit the post for the Flyers, I believe, down in the other end that they thought had scored. Half the crowd down that way celebrated like it had gone in. It obviously did not. But you're right. It could easily be a 3-0 game. Um, for a stretch here to start the way that it has, obviously a lot of time left. It's still two periods to go in this one. But um, knowing what the stakes are, knowing what the playoff picture around you looks like, knowing how other teams that you're battling with are playing, uh, they did not have a good showing, particularly at, to start against Montreal. Very poor period tonight. Uh, that can't, that that cannot bode well for this team, with John Tortorella uh, running the show. What do you think the uh, the atmosphere is like in the locker room right now? Is this a paint peeling off the wall? Oh yeah. You think so? If you were going to do it, I mean, again, you don't know when he's done it before. Like I don't, if you're unaware of that. But this would be one where you'd be like, whoa, boys, like, what are we doing here? I mean, they should have been ready from the puck drop, like just knowing the importance. But again, it's not about what the score is. It's about the process of how the Flyers played. And they did not play a winning style of game that they've been, you know, uh, con conducive to doing this year. They did not do it at all that period. And, and they, to qu be quite honest with you, they looked a little bit like they did last year at times. That can't happen now. There's no way they've come too far this year. Do you think we need to bring yeah, on we do. a special, we, we special a, counsel? We'll bring special we, counsel on. We got a offer. new little segment we're just testing here. We're looking for like kind of like the fan's view here, right? We want the person in the building to to let us know what he's thinking. And who else can do that? Well, but, we typically, uh, you know, we, we usually but, uh, have a guy with a shaved head, so why not replace one shave? Well, Ants isn't shaved on purpose. That's a uh, that's now, more you know of a hereditary thing. Now, you know here on the uh, Press Row Show Flyers, Eric, that we, uh, we can't swear, uh, but would this be a night that you would if you could? Yes. Let's lower that thing for you there, son. We're working with you here. Uh, <laughs> we... Um, just tell us your fans' view on that period. Very sloppy from the get-go. The power play still sucks. Uh, I don't think they need to bring Joey Mullen back. <laughs> Joey Mullen? Uh, Bill right. Meltzer and I talked about him pregame, believe it or not. We were talking about right now, prior uh, Knobloch, you my, know, my thoughts Michelle Terrian. If the Flyers can't beat this crappy Chicago Blackhawks at home in the position that they're in, they don't deserve to make the playoffs. That's it. That's that's. that's and I'm telling you. That's why soup. That's why Flyers Eric is here. It's the fans' view from the the he 200 speaks, level, and speaks, he just we just wanted to. For the fans. We're looking. We we were like bringing people on to become a new thing. It kind of has. We but are the people's is, podcast. This is like a minute with Flyers Eric in yeah. the first intermission. We're trying to make it a thing, and um, Flyers Eric, who needs to step up in the second period? The whole team. Okay, but if you had to pick one guy, who's the one guy? Sean Couturier. You're not seeing much out of Coots tonight? No. Nope. No. Is it time to scratch Coots again? Seems yes. Hard-hitting questions here. Yes. He says yes. Sure. And that, that has been the, uh, the super fan Eric minute of the... Uh, Eric, of the program. We love you. Thank you. Voicing you the too. fans' Thanks concern. For this, this the, the concerned fan. That's I'll right. Be, that actually might be the Monday. segment. The concerned fan. He's segment. concerned. Look at it. That's, right. that's what's on that's his a, face? That's concerned. the face of a concerned fan. Hey, if they lose this game, are they play, is the playoff hope over? I think so, yes. Really? Yes. So you think this is a must win? Yes. Oh, yes. A must win. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
he stole my line. He said, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Eric, thanks, brother. All right, well, we'll right. catch you next one. Right. Appreciate you, brother. All right, so speaking on behalf of the fans, he the says this is a must win. We, we've got the new segment. It's called The Concern Fan <laughs> with Flyers Eric. We couldn't think of a name. I was thinking like a moment with Flyers Eric. That's the, the, that's the name. Maybe that's it. The concerned fan this segment guy was with staring Flyers at you. See this guy with the backwards hat? He was staring at you. He was like staring into your soul. No, like right in front of you. He's not now, but like he was, he legitimately, like without blinking, stared at you straight, two minutes straight. I was looking at him. Once in a while, you get someone that looks at you like you're one of the Beatles, like Francis, and it's like kind of like, hey, no uh, John Lennon, no Paul McCartney here, brother. Help. <laughs> just Bundy. <laughs> I need somebody. <laughs> help. Not just anybody. Just an old defenseman. <laughs> All right, let's get back into what's happening tonight. It's a mess. It's an absolute disaster. What, what's happening? Tuck Phillips over on YouTube says, I'm not concerned. This team is awesome. Tuck, what are, what are we talking about? What the tuck are you talking about, huh? See? Um, this is... Uh, well, Eric Berkey says they're not making the playoffs. All right, let's everyone calm down. Land here, right? too. Hold on. No, no. Let the concerned fans pour in over on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Coots the new fourth line center. Flyers are awesome with the hands. He's bringing back Tuck again. Keep going, intern Andrew. Just keep the comments rolling. We got to know just how concerned people are at home. They might be very concerned. They might not be concerned at all. These guys are wearing Philly stuff. Are you concerned? What's the bigger concern? This Flyers Phillies team tonight or, or Aaron Nola? Both. No, you have to pick. There's no yeah. fence riding. This team right now or Aaron Nola? Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola, that's right. Anthony Sanfilippo somewhere at a theater. Is out saying, well, he's still an ace, guys. How about, Nola how about Anthony? Was the best option. They like that, Anthony. Give us, give us like the the no, you know, no, just nothing partial. Just I want your honest thing. This is the year. Uh, you yeah, know, he, he said. He said this yeah, is the year. This is it. This is the year they get over the hump. Bigger concern: Flyers tonight or Aaron Nola? Don't care about baseball. Good man. <laughs> Don't care about baseball. Another good man. Here we go. See. Thank you. Thanks. Did you give these? Did you give stickers? Hey, see, inter, 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 no, you just get them. We could, we could sign them. Sure, we can. I don't think. Do you guys have a marker? I don't. Do you have a marker? Uh, we'll sign them in a minute. We'll find one. All right. We'll find one. So you do right. have one. Intern answer has it. We got five minutes here, inter, Russ. Yeah, okay. And um, so, so we're not going to see a goalie change. No. You may see a tweaking of the lines. I want to check that early. Yeah. Because he's got to find something that's going or willing to work. And right now, there's not a whole lot working. Um, they need more jump. They need more energy. They need to be a little bit more pissed off than they have been. And because this isn't like some just friendly game, like Chicago is going to roll in the town here um, and make this like just an easy night for themselves. The Flyers have to ramp this up quick. I mean, the, the you know the concerned fan was on, and then you have you know people are saying like this this is a bad this is bad if they lose this game, like yes. really bad. And, and to go back to back with this and the Canadians. Yes. Game. Yeah, I know. You got so. through the gauntlet with the six points that you and Ant said. Get six points. You're, you're in good position to make the playoffs. And then to go out and have a, a stinker against Montreal, have a piss poor first period. We'll see. Again, two periods to go. Anything can happen. This game flips on its head. All of a sudden, we walk out of here. Maybe it's like the San Jose game, right? Where you go, eh, they, they maybe should have lost. It was close. They almost lost, but they walk away with two points. Obviously, if you get two points out of this, you're happy. You're maybe not thrilled with how the first period went, but this is not the kind of start that you expect to have. And Tortorella did say that, like, everybody understands the stakes. Everybody understands where they're at. Everybody understands where the standings are. That was not a good... Is is that, based on your experience as a player, is that a team, the Flyers, in that first period, is that a team that was taking Chicago for granted? Is that a Flyers team that just wasn't mentally checked in like what what was that it, it's not like they're not trying there's a, there's, right? a way, like, there's a way you have to play against teams like that and it's not cute cute will not work because then when you do you play like that you become that team and so the Flyers have had a way of playing games this year and we and, and even Montreal like I didn't love the game but they did they showed up in the third uh, it was too little too late ultimately and they got some goals but they they were they weren't goals they were disallowed and rightly so but this is a game tonight where you're, you've just made yourself the same team as Chicago by the way you played in the first period. And when you do that, let's not anybody be fooled here. The most skilled guy on the ice is the guy on the other side, 98. He's 18. He's got more skill than anybody else on the ice. And so you got to be, you don't want to trade chances with that. You want to make this life a little bit miserable. I know he's 18, but they got a bunch of guys that just want it easy, and the Flyers uh, are, are simply not playing the kind of game that they've, that they've 
had this year that's made them successful. Uh, I do want to ask you, Nick Sealer is back in the lineup tonight. Have you seen, like, what, what are you seeing out of Sealer tonight? It's been fine. I mean, uh, nothing spectacular, but he never does anything spectacular. He's working himself back he's into fine. it, too. He's fine, yeah. I mean, you know, he's got in. He's, he's a couple plays behind the net. Nothing flashy, nothing awful either. Yeah. I've seen him play better, but, you know, it is what it is. He's just coming back. He's missed, what, three-plus three, three plus weeks. Uh, Vineet Singh is an interesting one over here. Sanheim's looking like he's skating on one leg. Maybe he needs to sit for a bit. They can't afford to have him sit for a bit. Um, Sanheim? Yeah. You can't sit him now. No. no. I mean, it's just from skating alone. I mean, yeah, I mean, it. you know, he hasn't been great. Um, but, again, I, I tell people, though, there's 40 minutes left. Let's relax here, you know. We could come back here at the end of the second. It could be 4-2 Flyers. It could. I love the Jekyll and Hyde nature of our uh, comment section sometimes, you know. It's life is a roller coaster, Bundy. You wrote a whole book about it, right? A lot of ups, a lot of downs. That's life. That's life. <laughs> That's what the people say. Yeah. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. Yeah. I guess we'll say, maybe they'll play into May. Who's to say? Will they be riding on the back of Sam Harrison or perhaps Ivan Fedotov? Who knows? Who's to say? Just there, mess it. I, I've decided that tonight's the night I'm just going to keep jabbing you There's with the idea 40 of minutes left, controversy. and as you just saw one of the comments right there from Jeff Rose, it doesn't – they need to seem to come and play. This is not a team, if you look at their goaltender, he's got it over four goals against. He's got like an 865 save percentage. You know, you gotta be able to score. you're not playing Patrick Waugh or Brodeur here with the best, you know, the Montreal defense in the 70s. Go after the game, go to the front of the net with the puck, and turn it into a mosh pit. That's yeah. how you score. And yeah. then all of a sudden, they back up. They start playing differently, but you have to force them to play different. Right now, you made their life beautiful in that first in easy. the first period. Way too easy. They yeah. love playing it. It was a beautiful little game of pond hockey on the Rideau Canal in Ottawa in January. That's what that was. And they can't play like that. It's got to be ugly. Well, we're not going to ask about the first five minutes now, Ed Coleman, but we will in the second intermission, which reminds me, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, like the video, share the video, subscribe over on YouTube. If you're on Facebook and Twitter, we love you. We appreciate you, but head over to YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you're notified whenever we go live with the Press Row Show. Snow the goalie the morning after or any other interview or other show. We did an emergency podcast this week. I had the Ivan Fedotov, Fedotov, sorry, Fedotov, Fedotov. We had that uh, press conference on our YouTube channel as well. Big number there, Bundy. Big number. People love Fedotov. They do. They, they do. do. Yeah, big I mean, guy. Big guy. I'm looking. Uh, you know, it's be exciting Maybe when we'll we finally get to week. see him play. Yeah, we, if we see him tonight, something really bad's happened, yeah. so we don't want to see him tonight. That's exactly we'll see right. See you next period. But we'll see all of you. Second intermission. Talk soon.
Welcome in to the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame intermission and postgame show the side of the Mississippi South of the Arctic Circle, north of the equator and above sea level. Um, well, the Flyers are losing 3-1. It was not a good period for your team, your town, your Philadelphia Flyers. Um, it has not been a good game from your Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, Bundy, what can they do to uh, get this thing back on track? Because it ain't looking good. You know, great start. Tyson Forster with that great shot snaps it by uh, to make it 2-1 early. And, you know, you felt the Flyers like, okay, we, they got things going. But, you know, their, their power play now actually sucks the life right out of them. Like, tonight's a, a night where if you watch the game for a little bit, they were going, they started picking up 5-5. Five five. Then they get afforded a power play. And all three power plays tonight are just brutal yeah. like I mean as bad as you're going to find a power play against a team like this you know some nights you're not going to have it and that's that's a reality you're just it's not going to go your way sometimes but you have to find a way that you're not going to find yourself in a hole like this um, you can hold your head above water when you know your team and, and you know when the team's not going you're on the bench as a player you know that um, even Scotty, I like Scotty Lawton there getting that, uh, was at the end of the first, had at least had a fight. He recognized that their team had no energy. He was trying to provide some. It wasn't much of a fight, but at least it, he tried to get some energy infused into his team. But, you know, pow Chicago gets one power play goal, and they end up capitalizing on it and made it look way too easy. It's, nothing's going the Flyers' way, and, and when that happens, that's when you have to simplify things. And... I don't want to keep sounding repetitive, but that's it. I mean, there's no secret sauce or anything that you have to do differently against this team. You just have to play, but you got to play more between the hash marks, and they're not doing that. That's that's where this team uh, is. It, that's where their bread and butter is. I mean, it's not. They're not a skilled team. They don't have a, a Bedard type of player. I'll keep talking while Russ fixes the thing. They don't have a Connor Bedard type of guy. They have some good skill. Um, but and that's a young 18-year-old. But this is a team right now. They just need to find a way to compete harder and be better. And uh, boy, if I feel like I'm talking to myself, I am. Here comes Russ. Uh, not a good period, though. And they're going to have to really muster it up here in the third period. And, and uh, I don't like I don't like the fact at all that the Flyers have played more on the perimeter in this game no. than they have a, a lot of other games. I mean, this is a game you win in between the hash marks, in the paint, getting dirty, out competing in the defensive defenses hesitant when I watch Chicago's players when they go in the corner they're not a hundred percent sure they're guessing a lot they're, they're getting some good outs but the Flyers have, have just not done enough in this game to have sustained pressure um, and when they decide that they want to do it they, they do they hem Chicago in but it's one and it's a lot of one and done I thought the Montreal game is a lot of one and done where they get in they get one shot one opportunity and the puck goes back the other way I think the thing that's so frustrating, too, is you look at it and, and you know that fundamentally there are certain things that this team is capable of doing. There are things that this team should be doing. And for whatever reason, they just try to get too cute. And it's been all year. You know, it's been like this all season long. They get themselves caught up in trying to make plays that they, fr that they frankly should not be attempting to make. They make life way too hard on themselves. And ultimately, like, I, I don't know, I, I find myself in this, like, constant sort of concern about them where it feels like they are a dead team, you know? And uh, I, I, I don't know. There, there are times where I'm just, I'm waiting for them to pull the nose up on this thing, and I just don't see it. And I, I don't know, Bundy, it, it's weird. We've gone through so many games where they've put out a, a sensational effort against teams that they have no business competing with like Boston. night in and night out. Vegas, and then, Boston. And then you see them on the flip side where, like, San Jose, I keep coming back to the San Jose game, but to me that was like such a, sh a, a shocking and concerning game because it's one that they, they should have absolutely put to rest early and they didn't. And, and I don't know, man. Like, I, it, there are some things that are concerning. I want to know really quickly if you guys at home can help us out. Let us know in the comments. Our feed that we see here looks very blurry, but when I go over to Intern Andrew's computer, it looks perfect. I'm wondering if it's just a mine too. An, mine an, looks an, blurry an in too. An arena thing, where it looks like we're on like a very bad feed right now. Let us know at home. Look at the concern. If you're, if you're getting uh, the concern, better, the right. concerned fan came back up. Concerned fan is very concerned. Are you concerned? 
the only thing going down faster than this Flyers team right now is the quality of our video. I have no idea what happened. It's the uh, the internet itself. Like I said, over on intern Andrew's computer, it looks great. So there's an upload issue somewhere in this building. We'll get through it because we always do. We are the Press Row Show, I'm the number one like, rated. I feel like I'm waiting for torts to come out. I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? While we're at it, let's bring intern Andrew on. We'll see if now if his video looks good, then I'm going to be even more like concerned. Trash. So all right, let's see. There you go. Look at intern Andrew. He looks like a freaking stud. What, what did you do to about? us, dude? I didn't do anything. What did you do to the lens? I didn't do anything. You like did crap. something. I'm gonna try. Why do you look like a like a polished rose? Me and Russ look like look hell? like something in a 1975 is, show. When has this ever happened before that he looks? We look like, like WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> well, wait, our video just cleared up a little bit. Did you see that? Maybe we just it had did. To it cleared up. Wow. There. No, he did something. He did. What did you do? I didn't do anything. No, you see that, right? Look how much better the video looks now. Well, maybe maybe the show just runs on positive vibes. So when I I got brought up on the screen, <laughs> it, it fixed itself. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. That was weird. Anyway. Is it in, time? Intern Andrew's here. It is time for everybody's favorite uh, game here on the Press Row Show. And that, of course, is Intern Andrew Trivia. And thank God he's back. I did get the uh, the last one right though, which was we're gonna, a very exciting time. We're gonna have yeah. the, it's a special night because it's his first. But come on back, the concerned fan. We're bringing concerned fan back again. Yeah, he wants to hear. You know what? Uh, the concerned fan is back because what is happening. Um, he messed up the light over there. No, hold on. This is wait. What are we? It's doing? okay. No, the concerned okay. fan is here because he never hears the trivia. He oh. never hears it. Oh, okay. All right. Now intern Andrew's been thrown off because now we have to get. Super fan Eric back in here. Bundy Bundy has taken this show. We, we need to we, a scary we, we have no, place we need, without Ann. We need a fill in without Ann. We need somebody with the That's fair. With Eric, the clear, are you still the, concerned? Yes. Okay. Intern Andrew, hit us with the trivia. Okay, so if you guys uh, remember, these two teams actually met each other in the Stanley Cup this final. This is our trivia, you know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, Take, pay attention. Yeah. You with me? <laughs> All were, right. Were you doing, oh, Did you just slip off at Flyers Air? No, no. He's no. got tattoos on his head. <laughs> he told us he didn't have numbing agents when he got those tattoos. He's going to end you. That's pretty baller. You better watch your mouth. I was tongue in cheek. Relax. Take was it easy. It, though? Take it easy. All right. Let's go with trivia. Go. All right. He so they word. met each other in 2010. Yeah. Game one, I believe the date was May 29th, 2010. Uh, that's, unfortunately, that's the correct. Flyers lost 6 to 5. Very crazy back and forth game by my count. I believe there were five lead changes and five ties in this game. So like I said, unfortunately, the Blackhawks didn't win the game. However, the Flyers playing in the Stanley Cup final was the second biggest thing that happened in Philadelphia sports that night. Oh, I know what it was. I know exactly what it was. It was a Roy Halladay perfect game against Miami in Miami. That is correct. Back then, they were just the Florida Marlins. And I'm going to tell you why I know that. Because I was in Berlin studying abroad, and it was really late at night. It was around, I guess, 10 o'clock Eastern, so it was like 3 a.m. in Germany. I believe the ninth inning happened, like, right at second intermission. Okay. And so it was, it was probably around 3 in the morning Germany time. I was sitting on my bed at my guest family's house. I had a, an illegal stream, or sorry, a definitely legal stream of the Stanley Cup final, which kept going in and out. And on my phone, I had the ESPN app, and I was tracking Roy Halladay's perfect game. And I yeah. fell asleep in the eighth inning. I, I woke agree. up. Scott here, Scott's Wild happened. Adventures. So. And the, and you the ruined the court trivia for everybody. You just couldn't <laughs> wait to jump everybody else and just answer it, right, Russ? I, you couldn't let the question marinate a little bit? No. <laughs> let me think on it. You know yeah. what you did? You jumped it. Well, look, you jumped you, the shark. I set, you know what, I you set know. a record for the quickest trivia answer. How concerned are you right now? On a level of like one to ten, is it a is it like a ten or an eleven? Ten being the worst. Yeah. Uh, Jeff had a joke here too. Jeff's got jokes. I'm, I'm at a nine. <laughs> Jeff said you were studying abroad, Russ. What was the broad's name? That's not nice. Not nice, Jeff. <laughs> Funny joke though, but not nice. Anyway, I'm really sorry, everybody. I'm sorry that I ruined. Now my mom's backseat trivia trivia writing. All right, we're we're gonna get back. We're gonna get we're gonna get our um, concerned fan off again. What what do we need to do better this period? Connect on the power play for one. <laughs> I was asking for a miracle. Wishful thinking. And they get one and they score and make it look like uh, it's like the 80, 85 Edmonton Oilers. 
And Ursan needs a rest. I'm not going to blame it all on him. He needs a rest. Here's a question. You know, I, I know like Torts will look for some pop here. And I said I don't think you'll see it because I think the score is low. Like it. But this is you're getting into desperation moments here, like in terms of where you are with the standings and the points. I, I can't imagine it would happen. But if you're ever going to see Kolosov, this might be the time you'd see it just to infuse something into the team. Yeah. Again, I, I, there's, I a, there's a lot I of uh, there's a lot of thought process putting a guy like that in, and I don't know if it's the right thing. But when you get into panic mode, I've seen it. it you don't you do things that are just not where you don't think them out properly. But maybe it is the right move. If, the, if they pull them, they put Kolosov in, and all of a sudden they win. Yeah. That's you that mean, that changed you the trick. Fedotov. 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 I did the same thing earlier today. I get it all. You went out. All right, Concern Fan, thank you once again for the. Uh, thank you so much, Concern Fan. Perspective. So now, know, here's. Now, Bundy, there is some. It's funny that Intern Andrew brought up the 2010 season because I made the joke to you. We need to get. Can we get that light? We need that light turn. Can you turn Fedotov. that light? Okay. Fedotov. Yes, Fedotov. I got, I got. Yeah, I kept, we were so used to saying Kolosov for a week. Well, and, we, and well, in fairness, we we did think that it was supposed to be uh, Fedotov, but it is Fedotov. Listen, they both end in of. That's right. All right. Uh, anyway, we were talking about the 2010 season a little bit ago, and I said to you, as, as a joke though, in fairness, that 2010 run where uh, Flyers came back from the 03 series deficit to Boston. That was the series where Krejci's wrist was broken. And then it was like, after that, it was like one game after another, right? They got back Gagne. They got back Jeff Carter. Was that also when they, no, Richards broke Krejci's wrist. He hit him they in got, the middle of the ice, and it it, it, it got his wrist. Uh, was it his shoulder or his it wrist? Was it was wrist. definitely his wrist. So then he was out, and that took a lot of it was, Boston it was out of Gagne, it. It was Gagne. It was Carter. I feel like there was a third forward they uh, got back. I don't remember. Didn't Carter have a, didn't he have a, a thumb or a toe or broken thumb, I thought, maybe? I don't know, but I, I swore there were three. Anyway. So intern Andrew and I were kind of joking back and forth that, like, well, wouldn't it be something if history kind of repeated itself here? Maybe you don't fall back 0-3. But what if the Flyers go on a magical run in the playoffs? For, you got Nick Sealer back for the end of the regular season. First round, get back Jamie Drysdale. You get to the conference final, you get back Rasmus Ristolainen. You get to the Stanley Cup final, Ryan Ellis. Yeah, it's Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to... Now, that's, that's, you can't even make that up in the multiverse. There's no... Remember Doctor Strange in the in the Avengers was like I've seen you know a million outcomes. There's only one where where we can win. It's this one. This ain't the one where Ryan Ellis comes back for a Stanley Cup Finals run. I, I I mean I've run this show so far off the road and I'm sorry. We're we're so far the off one, the road. The one thing that is apparent tonight, and you know, I think when you look at the team, I've seen a couple people point it out. And sometimes you get a better perspective when you're watching on TV than you are at the game yeah. because you can see you look at the ice but you can actually tell fatigue sometimes a little bit more when you're watching on TV and this team does in a lot of ways look gassed and yeah. even in the Montreal game like as I said there's a, like a lot of one and done I mean when I say a one and done it means they come in the zone they'll get a chance a shot it'll either go in the corner carry them off the goalie so the goalie will stop it and there's no rebound second chance or they fire it in the goalie pushes it in the corner and the other team just simply breaks out from there. So yeah. one and done, rather than getting it in, you know, fatiguing the other team, being willing to compete with the puck, being hard in the corners to play against. They haven't done that at all in this game. And that's the, the, the part I think, this is, a, like, if you're down 3-1 to Boston, uh, you're probably done. Like, you're, 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 you're in a, a tough spot. Florida, tough spot. Yeah. But this is a game here that you still have, you have 20 to minutes to execute, and, and they can do it. There's a blueprint to beat this team. But they've only done it sparingly so far tonight, and they're going to have to figure it out very early. First five minutes, Russ. The first five. The first important. five tonight is is, so, is crucial. Crucial. Yeah. Well, okay. I expect that Sam Harrison's going to be in net. If in the first five minutes Chicago scores, do you pull the goalie? If if Chicago scores, if Chicago again? scores in the first five. Well, I mean, it depends. One, you can't give the game up. You can't pull him with ten minutes left and make it. Six no, 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 no. I mean, like, do you switch? Do you switch goals? Oh, I don't if, know. If, you, if you're going to do it, you do it now. Not not if a, an no. early goal scored in the third. Okay. No. I don't see it happening, but I could be wrong. Um, I guess, you know, you, you look at some of the comments that people have had over here, and there there are a few things that are standing out. And, and listen, Tortorella said this morning, getting Nick Sealer back is huge. 
because he plays the right way. He does a lot of the things that they want this team to do. But he did mention, you know, the, the question came up about losing him and losing Sean Walker at the same time, and also Drysdale around, I mean, all within, what, a week of, of each other, right? And he said that, you know, while Sanheim and York had played really well, uh, he wasn't so, so sure that, like, losing a guy like Walker, having Drysdale, having Sealer out, that that wasn't just as impactful. And I, I do think that what you've seen since they moved Sean Walker is, like, they, they have really struggled to get the puck out of their own end and, and transition, which they struggled with all last year. No question. He was their best puck-moving defenseman. But again, if you weren't going to, and again, we're going to get into the contracts, if you weren't going to pay him what you thought that he was going to ask for, yeah. and you didn't feel that was worthy, then you had to move him. So Danny yeah. did the right thing by moving a player for a first-round pick. Yeah. That's the right play to make. Yeah. Now, has the team hurt in response to it? It has a little bit. It's had a harder time getting pucks out of the zone efficiently. Nothing you can do about that now. You have to make do with what you got. I'm just taking a look really quick. I do not see a six foot eight goalie in that. Sam Harrison is back out there. We yeah. are not. Well, I thought yeah, if there was a chance, this might have been when you saw it because, they, again, they did. Maybe you don't push the panic button yet, but I mean, if they, Chicago comes out and there's something not going good, you have to consider, maybe not, for us, maybe the torch is like, you know what, we're just gonna go, because when you make a move like that, you're also, you could put the other guy under duress. Yeah, like, you, it's like, oh, like, what are, you know, where's his head gonna be? So you gotta be careful with that, and I'm sure that'll be part of the thought process. Um, I, I would I would consider I think that. I think that that's actually the bigger thing at play here is you're it's not like you don't think Erson is like mentally capable of you know handling that kind of thing but to put in a guy who hasn't played a competitive game in three weeks who just got into the country who's still breaking in his pads as we talked about with uh, Bill Meltzer pregame ah, he's yeah, a hockey yeah, player yeah, Russ three weeks though I mean I don't know Come on. you don't want to run I don't know you know what I'm not going to sit here and tell you I, I do it, but yeah, I know some people are like, ah, the hell with it, put them in. Well, I mean, a goalie, if you put in a goalie who's cold, who hasn't been on the ice actively engaged in hockey activities, I mean, there is a concern about an injury, right? Like, is there. Well, yeah, but I mean, which there's, is maybe why there's more, con there's more concern with getting two points. Okay. And that's the mission right now. We'll see a post game. Um, Flyers got some work to do here, and they got to do it the right way. We'll see how they do. We'll be back post game here on the Press Row Show.
We got a problem now. <laughs> the Flyers lose back-to-back -back games. That's the worst to, loss of the year. I mean, I'm just bad, gonna say it. I don't even want. I don't bad say it. teams. Montreal had a more semblance of like you know organization, I thought, than this tonight. And Luke's a good coach. Like I know Luke Richardson. We all know here. He's a, you know, I've been a good flyer, great friend of, of everybody here. But you know, he had his team ready to play tonight. And the Flyers, they looked gassed. Yes. Like they looked like they had fumes coming out their rear end, and that's all because they had no nothing in the tank. Um, and I don't know if it's, I mean, you can't pick a worse time of year to go in reverse. I mean, there's just that you can't make this up. Yeah. And listen, they've been pushed on hard all year, you know, 75 games. And they're still in the driver's seat. But, man, I'll tell you what, that's the two points where you look back at the end if you don't make it and you're like, oh. That's why I hate with that loss. I don't want an excuse at the end of the year. And, man, I'll tell you what, that two points tonight terrifies me, the loss of that. At least one. A worst case, you get one against this mess. Yeah. Um, and, and the way Chicago scored, I mean, come on. I mean, they look like they did. They look like the 85 Edmonton Oilers out there tonight. It was, it was, it was an awful, awful night. Uh, I hated the game. I, this was a night I thought the Flyers were going to rebound, respond, answer the call. Be ready to play. Be hard to play against. Assert your will at home here. Not one of those things happened. Not absolutely not one of those things. I got the score right. <laughs> I got the, the, <laughs> the, wrong, the wrong team. Way. I mean, but you know, that's what I thought. Like, I mean, I, and I'm usually like, I, I usually think I'm out pretty good. Yeah. Um, this, this was an, an anomaly. It's like a, it's an outlier, but it, it happened. So it's not a liar at all or an outlier. It happened, and um, we're waiting for the uh, the Washington game was 2-2 in the third. I haven't seen an update, but, I mean, that's what we're at at the point right now um, uh, that we're looking so at. So right now, Tampa is beating. Yeah, that's over. Tampa's, Tampa's uh, yeah, well, no, there's seven minutes left. Tampa's up 3-1 over the Islanders. Uh, Bruins and Caps right now are tied at the end of regulation, so Caps so are picking up a point. They got a point. At least one, maybe two. Um, not ideal. You know, you mentioned a little bit ago, you said uh, Flyers are in the driver's seat. It's fitting that tomorrow's Easter, because it feels like they need Jesus to take the wheel kind of thing if, if you're the Flyers right now. This is not, that is not going well. Uh, by, the, by the way, Watching uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, we appreciate all of you. Head over to YouTube if you can. Like the video, share the video, subscribe. Let it all out in the comments. We are here to kind of guide you through what has just been a... I mean, listen, I, I mentioned off the top of the show, it's back-to-back -back losses to bad teams, but it's four straight losses. They picked up a point in an overtime loss three games ago, but it's it's four straight losses. Well, who they look? Well, wait. They it was the Rangers. Didn't they beat they beat Boston? Right? Did they have a they did, oh Florida, they Florida, Florida, Florida? Yes, Florida yes. four one at home. They lost 6-5 in overtime at New York, 4-1 on the road to Montreal, now 5-1 at home to Chicago. I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm not going to start doing the, you know, a million, you know, sirens and red flags and everything, but, like, the coach said everybody understands what's on the line They and, and expected them to come out and play well and play the right way. They did not play the right way. Yeah, and, and, and they didn't. And, and you were talking about the gauntlet, and I see just somebody mentioning the gauntlet. Yeah, it was it was tough, and they responded well. But there's a dip now, and and it's because <laughs> they went through that, and they saw the top of the, of, the, of the league, and they did okay. I mean, not great, okay. Six points in seven games. Not ideal, but not, not the worst, right, given what of their 14. talent is relative. Yeah. When we said six would be acceptable, but I also didn't predict that they would not get at least three out of four points in these two games. Yeah. At least three out of four. Montreal, I knew, would be a tough game. I picked Montreal. I thought that that would be a difficult game for the Flyers. And, and Montreal, you know, their coach back. They're, they're back at home after a good a win on the road trip. But tonight, un absolutely unacceptable. Um, Chicago played at Ottawa the other night. Ottawa looked unbelievable against Chicago. They shut them out 2 nothing. And the Cox come in here tonight and just absolutely wombashed the Flyers. I think, just he, I think you just them. I think you just uh, combined Black Hawks into one thing. A little Freudian slip there. Whatever uh, it was. Whatever it was. It's a this French, whole game was a French, Freudian it's his, slip. It's his, uh, it's his, you know, French heritage. You just, you know, with the uh, 
We're fine. Oliver, so, uh, Oliver says, asking about yeah, the locker room. Do we think room. something's happened in the locker room, and that's why they've fallen off the damn cliff? Well, let's have a chat about the locker room, shall we? Not that long ago, the coach opted to scratch the captain, who hadn't played very well. And the thought was at the time, we, we all kind of said the same-ish thing. Like, you know, maybe he's trying to play the old mind game, the little Jedi mind trick, the Mike Keenan kind of thing, the Hitchcock thing. Let's galvanize the team against the coach and see if it works. And there, there typically are short-term gains, and they, they did pick up some points after that. Not saying that Couturier played incredibly well, not saying he played well tonight. But uh, that has not worked. If, that, if the idea was it was going to galvanize and send this team on a big run, it has not worked. That part, at least, has not worked. I don't know what else they could do. I, I do believe that if it weren't Ivan Fedotov on the bench tonight and it were Felix Sandstrom or somebody who has been here, I do think that they would have probably thought about pulling the goalie after the second period, certainly at some point in the third. Again, I will come back to, I don't think that Fedotov, a guy who just came into the country this week and is still getting acclimated. You know, I, I know you said in the second intermission, hey, it's more important to get two points than worry about the guy getting hurt. But like, given everything that's on the line, I do think that they didn't want to run themselves into a position where they maybe run him into an injury because he's not at, at game, game shape if he's not stretched out, whatever it is for being such a big goalie. Uh, there, are, there are serious concerns. I don't know what the Tortorella post-game press conference is going to look or sound like. We're not sending intern Andrew down. Anthony is off at the theater tonight uh, doing his, his theater duties there. Um, I'm sure we'll tap into whatever Torts ends up saying. I don't expect a lot of very thoughtful responses. I'm sure somebody's going to ask about if he thought about switching goalies. He'll say no because I don't know what Fedotov is. He said that this morning <laughs> at the, uh, after the morning skate. I if he, know. if he, you know, if he even he does a lot, he does a lot of the morning stuff, but I'm not sure if he's going to do the post game. Well, he said the other day that the re it was actually kind of funny. The reason that he skipped out on two uh, uh, post game press conferences is because he had family in town at both of those games. That doesn't really matter when uh, Bobby Brink or Travis Sanheim are playing in front of their home uh, crowds or in front of their families. It just happens to be an oops, I didn't know. But when it's the coach and he has family in town. Uh, then it does apply to him, at least. Uh, I don't think that he's going to give much. I think he's going to do one of the pouting 45-second press conferences, and then we're going to have the typical thing that we have, where people with a brain who are used to how coaches that are responsible, I guess, at, at addressing concerns after losses say, hey, that's not good enough anymore, and we're going to have the loyalists who are going to say, you don't know anybody who an answer to anything. And like at some point, yeah, you do. There, there, there is an accountability question here. I don't know how you get this little out of this team against these bad teams. It's one thing to put up a lot of fight against that gauntlet, but to have two performances in a row like this is inexcusable. I don't care what level talent you have. You've put yourself in position to make the playoffs. I don't want to hear that, that they just weren't able to get it up for this game or for last game. That's not okay. It doesn't matter who the coach is, right? You have to play better. The expectation, you've, you've changed, you've level set to get people to believe that this is a playoff team, that you're on the cusp. You didn't do a fire sale at the deadline. There's no excuse for this back-to-back -back games. And again, four straight losses. How, uh, how do you spin it? There's no, it, there's, no, there, there's no spinning this one. This is one where you got to come out and you got to eat your own lunch just in front of everybody and say, you know what? This is one where the coach, you got to put a little bit on yourself. Like, you really do. This is, a, you know, the, the, the team wasn't ready to play. They, not at all. And, again, I think they're out of gas. I think that they just were completely fatigued, and no one cares. I mean, they're going to be, uh, see it, Mike, um, you, you know, they got another game Monday, another crucial, critical game against a team that's been up and down like the Flyers of late, the Islanders. But this is, um, this is a bad time for this. It really is. Yeah. Four in a row. Uh, they picked up, um, is it one? Yeah, one point in the last four games. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, they lost three the, in regular the, the Rangers. the overtime uh, loss to the Rangers is the lone point that they've had in the last four. It, it's totally inexcusable. And again, I hope that the coach will come out and offer some actual insight and not just blow it off. Because if you're a fan who's now committed and, and kind of like thrown themselves into this, thrown their heart into this, believes in this team, to see this in back-to-back -back games is not acceptable, and somebody does have to answer for it. And you can't just have it be the, the players only coming out and, and offering their thoughts. They're going to say that they're frustrated and that they feel like they've let four points get away from them here. But 
I, I don't know. Bundy, we come back to the same thing that we've talked about so many times this year. The power play. Yeah, the power play is, is just – it tonight, you know, I've given – I don't like to pin the blame on one person. I know Rocky is – that's his responsibility. His, that's what his job description is. But as I said before, there's a myriad of people working on the power play. They simply don't have the skill to execute regularly. The problem with the power play for me, though, is tonight it sucked the life out of you. It really, really, really puts you in a bad spot. Yeah. And, and um, it was a detriment, like a true detriment tonight. Um, and and that, that can happen. I mean, you're gonna, a power play, you're not going to score every time. And we said, but you've got to at least put some chances together yeah, and make it interesting. Because at, at least if you don't score a power play, you build some offensive momentum. And they, they didn't do that at all. It was awful tonight, just awful. And I think that that's maybe the thing where, you know, again, we come back to, all right, if, if you think you're going to be a playoff team and you're thinking about, like, if you can try to give a team a run in the first round, you can't have the power play hitting at 13%. Like, you might be able to somehow, in this Eastern Conference where things have gotten really weird down the stretch, you might be able to have an excellent PK that keeps you in games. You've benefited largely from excellent goaltending all year, which, in fairness, has dropped off quite a bit of late. Eventually, you are going to kind of have that regression to the, to the mean. And, like, at some point, you have to look at it and say, all right, this, like, you can't have everything hitting on all cylinders with this power play being as putrid as it is. I don't know what they can do to fix it. They have tried to do some, like, changes on those units. They've tried to change where some guys are set up on, on the power play. But, like, again, we talked about this earlier in the game. It's like they're the 22nd team, 22nd team in goals scored mm -hmm. this season, mm -hmm. just across all situations, 22nd. Yep. They're 20 – no, they're 31st, 32nd in the league. In, no, they're, they're last. They're last with 13% uh, on the power play. You, if you're even 25th in the league in power play percentage, you probably have at least two more points this season, maybe three. Sure. Easily. Easily. And in a game like tonight, where you just desperately need a power play goal when given the opportunity to swing things back in your favor, or to at least get the game level, they continue to come up small. They continue to try to make skilled plays when they don't have that skill. And I don't understand how we continue. It's been all season. We have the same talk. They need to keep it simple. They need to crash the net. They need to put the puck on the net. You can't just keep looking for the perfect shot. We keep saying it. The coaches eventually, you know, come out and they say that they're preaching the same thing. Why hasn't it gotten through to these players? Like, what? Where? where is the disconnect there? Overall in goal scoring, you mean? Or in, in I'm saying, where's the, where's the disconnect between the, the coaches are saying that they're telling these guys, keep it simple. The same stuff that we talk about up here, about the strategy on the power play. And yet these guys, when they get on the ice, they're trying to make skilled plays. They're not doing what the coaches <laughs> say they're, they're trying to implement. So where is the disconnect? This is called, um, um, it, when, you get, <laughs> when you get into a mode like that, it's called human nature. And that's what happens. Guys, I'm telling you, guys get out there, the offensive players, they want to pad their stats like, oh, tonight's cookie night. We're going to be cookie monsters. We're going to all get hit points. We're going to have 20 points, all of us. And that's not what happened. It was the other way around because they did not play the right way. Do you think that this was once again a case of the team taking the opposition lightly? Or do you think it's that they are physically worn down? They, it was a combination of both tonight, I think. There's no doubt they were gassed. Absolutely fatigued beyond what I you know we've seen and I thought that I saw that the other night one and done both two games in a row that's how you know the team is a little bit tired because they're just getting one they get a shot there's no second opportunity there's no one crashing the net there's no net presence so that's what's happened and then all of a sudden you think guys are going to um, make it uh, make it an easy night for themselves by thinking that they're going to go out and have a, a good old offensive showing against a team that's just brutal and um, that's what happened. Just looking to see really quick if there's uh, any sign of this post-game press conference being streamed. I do not see it anywhere. We did not send intern Andrew down for this. Um, I'll give you a silver lining tonight. All right. Had nothing to do with the, the team on ice. Okay. I don't know if you saw who dropped the puck uh, pregame, but the Flyers announced prior to the game that they're supporting the uh, University of Delaware women's hockey team. Great. I think that, that's a new program. 
at the University of Delaware, and I believe that was a, a representative. I don't that's know great. what the what the person's uh, role was with the team, but that that was a rep promoting women's sports. I think that's great. Yeah, so that's awesome. that was that was like a good luck to them. A, Delaware there's a, cool, talk. there's a cool little silver lining, I guess. Do we have anything else we need one? to talk about? Is anything else? I don't know. I mean, like, like a lot of, I mean, a lot of people are jumping in the comments and everything. Um, but you know, oh, okay. So apparently, Torts at the press conference said we suck tonight. I mean, at least that's at least he's not trying to gaslight people into saying, well. I think we played our game the right way. I think we we did the they right did things. They did not. They didn't play a good they game. Didn't. That's that's the honest answer to give. Um, we talked about this the, uh, throughout the week. We talked about it again today, and I think this is probably a good place to end it on. But I don't know how much of you put how much you put tonight's game on the goalie. How many of these goals you put on the goalie on Sam Harrison? But he's been thrust into a role that he was not supposed to going into the season when Redacted was the starter. Uh, he has been kind of thrust into that role. There haven't been a lot of starts given to backups on this team. Torts is kind of notorious for riding a, a, a starter quite a bit. Does it look like Arison is wearing down to you? Well, I mean, it's, it's a long year. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is when he's a goaltender that hasn't had, like, you know, I think he's better when he, he owns the net. So again, I don't know if his you know pressure from another goalie's changed what it looks like, but that can't be what you worry about. You have to go out and just do the job. And I don't think it was all his fault. I didn't like the first goal; that, that was awful. The wraparound was a bad. Yeah, it was not a good goal. But the rest of them, I mean, there were not a lot. There's a breakaway, do. and yeah, I mean, you got to make he's a stop. He's good on breakaways, but yeah, yes. just, they were all shots, right? And they were yeah. getting a lot of them over the uh, glove side of them. But yeah. it was it was a stinker. It was an awful night for a stinker, and it uh, it it. It, they need to really rebound quickly um, on Monday. And so that that's where I want to take this as we get ready to head out here. They're at home against the Islanders on Monday. That is a massive, massive, massive game for the yep. playoffs. You lose that one in regulation, and that's a four-point game. I mean, yeah, realistically, well, that, that's a that's a four-point game in the standings. Ab- if absolutely. you lose in regulation, that'd be, that would be a disaster class. No question about that one, Russ. So they have that game. That's at home. And then they're off for... Three days, they, they take the ice again in Buffalo next Friday, and then uh, Saturday in Columbus. In Columbus. Yep. When do we see Ivan Fedotov? Do we see him, uh, like, if you if you were torts, do you try to get him in the lineup on Monday in what is a very high-pressure situation, but it's at home? Granted, this guy hasn't played in the NHL regular season in any arena before. Does it really matter if it's home or away for him? But do you get him in that game at home? Or do you start him at one of the games? I mean, you figure he'll have to play one of the games on the weekend. Yeah, they're going to they're going to they're going to put him in. A, yeah, gonna it's going to be a road game. Yeah. Which one do you? Columbus. Do you, you think Columbus? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Ivan Fedotov. Uh, another thing that you want to keep an eye on is shop.snowthegoalie.com. I came up with an idea of a design during this. I think it's going to. I think it's going to do very well. I'm very happy with it. We'll see how it goes, but uh, that'll come out at some point in the week. A uh, big thank you to everybody who tuned in here live for pregame, intermission, postgame. A big thank you to everybody who listens after the fact in the postgame uh, feed in the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Pandora, wherever you get your podcasts. If you haven't done so already, like the video, share the video, subscribe on YouTube. And if you haven't done so on the podcast feed, like, you know. Bruins follow, won in the follow. shootout. Oh, Bruins won. Yeah, good. So that helps. That, that's it's a point. point. Believe me, that helps. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. Leave a five-star review. We're going to read them this week. So get excited for that, fella. All right. Yep. We're back here on Monday. Everybody who uh, celebrates Easter on Sunday, have a very happy Easter. And uh, if you don't celebrate uh, Easter, then I guess enjoy Treaster. Have a great Treaster. Get it? Easter Sunday, everybody. And we'll catch you guys on Monday. All right. We'll talk to everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody.